In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the Kylo Ren lightsaber effect in Photoshop. This looks like it's going to be really, really difficult, but it's actually really easy and you can do it all within Photoshop within 60 seconds. So let's get started. Okay, gonna do a real quick lightsaber tutorial here. This one is gonna be a little bit different from the other ones I've got on the channel. We're gonna do Kylo Ren and his wavy kind of distorted lightsaber. So I know a lot of people are asking for this one. I've got a really, really quick way of doing this. So let's get started. I'm gonna create a new layer. We're gonna get the core of the saber out it's exactly the same as all the other ways I've taught you how to do this. So I'm gonna use the pen tool. Now, I'm gonna go a little bit wider around the, the core here because I'm using this figure. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll see why once we get to the end of the effect, but in an ideal world, try and use footage where uh, there's either no lightsaber or um, you know, it's just a bit thin and you can work around it, so to speak, because this effect is going to work better if there's not a lightsaber in place. So see what I'm doing, just drawing around very, very carefully. And we'll do the center here. Might as well get these edges. Doesn't really matter. Let's go to the end. All the way up here, go out wide, come back here. Du, 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 du. There's all these notches that I want to take out, but we won't worry about that for the moment. And that will do. Right, connected. So I've got my path. So I've got the path around uh, the core on the two. What do you call those bits? I forget. Cross cards. So come over to paths and we'll go right click oh let's just check i've got a layer yep so we've got a layer here layer one saber demo empty empty layer come to paths right click fill sub path so there's three paths here the two cross card pieces and the main one so i'm going to do fill sub path white 100 percent uh get your pen tool p then you need to click one of the other paths, right click again, fill sub path, white again. Uh, I should just tell you what I'm doing with the pen tool. When I'm clicking, I'm holding control down. So control or command on a Mac. See how the cursor changes? That's important. So I need to hold control down and then click. And then it's going to select the sub path. Right click, fill sub path, white. Okay. And then lastly, I'm going to click off that work path to deselect the path, and now we're just dealing with the filled-in layer. So simple little filled-in layer of the white core. What I like to do is just take a backup in case I stuff things up really badly and need to come back to it. So we've got that. I'm gonna put a bit of blur on this immediately. So I'm gonna go to Blur Gallery, Field Blur. I'm gonna pop one down here. Oh, Photoshop's already popped one over here. Come on. So I'm going to put one on the end. I'm going to blur that a little bit. I'm going to go back to the hill. I'm going to take the blur off of that and just have a little bit of blur. And maybe we'll just creep a little bit of bokeh in on the light. Um, actually, I meant to do it on that end, but that's okay. There we go. Let's put that up for the sake of it. This is just better than Gaussian blur. It gives a more varied result more natural result so we've just we're just blurring the core of it so now what i'm going to do is get uh, red glow so right click on the layer blending options you can see i've got a few here already so these are just different drop shadows so that first one kind of a red light and color you can see there's not much of it just a spread for size for distance zero. If you do distance zero on a drop shadow, it will effectively make it a glow. Um, and drop shadow is just a little bit more versatile to work with, mainly because you can add more than one. So you can see I've got another couple there. So the second one, 
got a light and blend mode. The size is much bigger, spreads a bit bigger there, six. And the third one, that's actually a bit too um, big. We'll dial that back. There we go, we got the glow. Now, here comes the cool bit. This is the bit you're after. So how do we get the distortion effect? What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a displacement map and apply that effect directly to the layer here. Now, we'll be using this under distort, file, distort, sorry, under the filter, I should say, filter, distort, displace. So what we need is a displacement map. This is dead easy. You can create this in Photoshop. So I'm gonna create a new document the same size as this, just to keep things easy. There we go, new document. And I'll save that, and I'm gonna call that Displace 2. All we're gonna do is apply the clouds effect. So if you go to filter and then render and then hit clouds, you're gonna get this. Make sure when you do this, you've got black and white selected. So if you've got different colors here, you're gonna to wanna to click this to make sure you reset back to black and white. Now having done that, I'm immediately gonna go back to filter, render and click difference clouds. So this is gonna run straight over the top of difference clouds and this is gonna give us this kind of effect. I'm gonna hit Control I or Command I on a Mac. That's gonna make it almost look like lightning and then we might just run difference clouds one more time just for the hell of it. So we've got this kind of mess. Uh, and what I wanna do is add a bit more contrast in this. So I'm gonna run levels on this, Control L. Don't worry about doing an adjustment layer because you can play around with this. And I just wanna make sure there's good kind of contrast between uh, the sort of shadows and the highlight areas because that contrast is what's gonna be, uh, what's gonna create the sort of fuzziness of the blade, the effect. We're gonna need to play around with this a couple of times. So keep this document over. I need to save it. This is, a, you can see there the star I'm gonna click Control S or Command S and that will save it. We'll then go back to Kylo here and we're gonna apply that displacement map to the blade. Now remember the blade here is just the white core we drew that I've put a little bit of blur on. The, the red drop shadow effects aren't gonna have this effect applied to, but they will change to, I guess, adjust to how the layer is going to change as this effect gets applied. Easiest way to ex explain this is just to show you, then it will make more sense. So we're going to come down to Filter, Distort, Displace. And then in here, you've got a couple of things to play with. You've got the scale. Now, essentially what this controls is how much is this displacement map going to shift your document? So is it gonna shift the horizontal axis by a certain amount and is it gonna shift the vertical axis by a certain amount? Uh, so you can play around with these. We'll start with seven and we might come back and change these. Uh, these options, displacement map and undefined areas, it doesn't really matter for these. If you're doing what I'm doing and using a displacement map that's the same size as your document, these aren't really gonna do much anything. So we'll leave those as is, click OK, and now it's going to ask us to select the displacement map. So you can see there, pick Displace 2, and boom, that's applied. So you can see that started to introduce a bit of that Kylo distortion. Uh, it's, it's good, but it's not quite right, so I'm going to undo it. What I might try now is run it again, and just jack up the horizontal and vertical scale. Click Displace 2 again. And now you can see it's shifting stuff around much, much more because of that increase in the scale. But obviously we've overdone it. This is too severe in terms of how much it's moving the document around. So I'm gonna undo that again. We're gonna to wanna to go back to the smaller scale shifts, but what I wanna do is come back to the displacement map and make another adjustment to it. So you can play around with this. You can keep playing around with this. What I could do is come down to render again, do another 
round of difference clouds on it. Uh, we could save that, come back again, filter, distort, displace, and you can basically just keep applying it until you dial in on something that looks right. But for my money, the contrast is pretty much the most important thing on the displacement map. So we really wanna make sure we've got good lights in the white end and good darks on the uh, black end. Might invert that, it doesn't really matter, but you might find you get slightly better results from inverting it each time. I'm gonna undo once more. And we'll go one more time, we'll stick with seven. You get the idea, we get this lovely jagged effect on the edge of the blade. Now, if I just move it away from the core, because I think the actual edge of the toy isn't helping, you can see it's pretty much spot on. I've got another displacement map I created earlier, just playing around. I'm gonna run that one on it, which is this displace.psd, that's not bad. And I might try running that, say, at 10. And that looks pretty good. So the offset is going to shift your core away from where it started. So you may need to move the layer around with your arrow keys or just jag it, uh, drag it to recenter it where it was. But effectively, this is all there is to it. There's one more variation of this you can try, and that's combining the drop shadows with the core before you apply the displacement map. So let me show you that. So we'll grab our uh, layer here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go copy layer styles. Then we can go on our backup here, turn the original off, right click, paste layer style. That will then copy over those drop shadows. What we're gonna to wanna to do is blur this, and it is important you blur the core, otherwise the displacement doesn't really work. So it's really, really important. I should have mentioned that earlier, but we'll just reapply a bit of a blur here. There we go. And I wanna rasterize all these layer styles, all these drop shadows, so we'll right click, rasterize layer style. That's gonna combine all those drop shadows with the white core and now we've got that single layer with both the core and the red glow. So now we can go back to our distort displace effect. We'll start with seven and pick one of those displacement maps. And it's gonna do the same thing, but what it's gonna do now is it's gonna displace the shadow as well as the core. So now you're gonna get sort of subtle shifts in what would be an otherwise kind of uniform shadow, um, shadow and it's almost like it's smudging it. So it creates that sort of static that comes off uh, Kylo's blade quite nicely. So as you can see, I mean, you have to play around with this a little bit. You, you know, the offset, the actual uh, effects in your displacement map, even just doing a straight invert can just give slightly different effects than the other way around. So that's all there is to it, really. Have fun with it. And I mean, this is the easiest way you can get this kind of effect for a Kylo Ren lightsaber. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Uh, I've got a few others on the channel. If you look on the videos tab here, uh, I've done a really, really long tutorial on how you can do better effects around lightsabers, atmosphere, depth of field, that kind of thing. And there's plenty of other tutorials on the channel, force lightning, rim lighting, all sorts of effects in Photoshop. Um, and then taking work like this and then getting a nice color grade on top like this so the final result looks really, really good. So please subscribe to the channel. When you do, there's a cool subscriber-only video waiting for you on the channel page. Really appreciate a like on this video. Uh, and if you've got any questions, if anything about this doesn't make sense, leave me a comment below. I do answer. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. 
You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber-only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.